Okay, we're back live at Strata Conference. We're here at SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv. It's the Cube, where it's actually not a Cube. It's that's the name, but we'll soon have a Cube, Dave, and uh, and actually be a real Cube. Because we're like, where's the Cube? I was looking for a Cube. So we're here live on the ground, eight hours a day, uh, bringing you knowledge and. Uh, content from Strata with analysis. Tons of live streaming going on, on the web. O'Reilly has their own conference being streamed on the keynotes and the sessions. They even have their own little news desk and how-to uh, clinic. So O'Reilly's got a ton of video. Go check out their site, but also stay on siliconangle.tv because we're bringing you the independent analysis and the commentary and opinion. Uh, I'm John Furrier, the founder of siliconangle.com, and I'm with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org, and we're here with Rob Metcalf, who's the president and COO of Digital Reasoning. Uh, Rob, welcome to theCUBE. Hey, it's great to be back. Good to see you guys. So, uh, so we got a spotlight, really what I would call putting content into context, which is sort of what you guys do. So we're going to you know, drill into that topic a little bit and uh, talk about you know, where you guys have come from, which is sort of an interesting background. But, uh, yeah, so, so we're at Hadoop World, we had a great conversation uh, talking about um, the semantic and some of the cool things going on in, in, with big data. And one of them is obviously using the data. You're hearing it here, the use cases are all about you know, uh, watching trends, looking at patterns, seeing all kinds of things. So this is a semantic web problem. And you guys were really the company that had the most, what I would call IQ points in my mind around, around this problem. Um, I also understand that you guys have a customer that you really can't talk about uh, and U.S. government um, uses you guys. Is that true? Yeah, we've, we've been working, <laughs> serving in the defense and intel sector for a number of years now, yeah. I can only imagine the intel that they're using big data for and uh, you guys have a cloud project um, mm -hmm. we signed up for. What's the, uh, what is that about? Yeah, so we basically took our technology, our product's called Synthesis and it's a, a large scale engine for analyzing unstructured data. Uh, turning it into a usable form, facts, and relationships. And we took that and we um, basically did the tooling so we could scale that out and people could access it um, in a hosted model. And we call that Synthesis Cloud. So talk about the business that you guys have, then we'll drill down into some of the more trends. Sure. Obviously you guys uh, are in Tennessee and you have people kind of you know, around in you know, North and West Coast. What's the business like for you guys now? Obviously you have a big government contract, government uh, relationship with, with around their Intel stuff, but commercially, What's going on with the business and where you guys at? How are you uh, responding to all this growth in the marketplace? Uh, we had Mike Olson on there doing extremely well with Cloudera. Uh, and just in general, the massive growth has actually surprised me. I knew it was going to be big, but not this fast. Uh, are you guys seeing the same thing and how are you guys managing that growth? Yeah, absolutely. So a couple things since we were together in November, uh, we announced a, a new a board member that came on, John Brennan of uh, Silver Lake Sumeru, who's part of a a little bit of fundraising that we did and announced in, in uh, early December. So part of it is getting the right set of partners and, uh, and capital to grow the business. Um, you know, we're looking to use the, the same sort of technology, our core synthesis engine. So I was talking about with Synthesis Cloud, so enabling you know, a number of customers to come on and basically build applications on our platform. Uh, and we're using the same technology uh, with a, you know, a, a pretty uh, interesting and, but, um, set of customers in the, a couple different verticals. You know, things that we're particularly interested on, very much sort of themes with this, um, you know, with, uh, with this conference are where it are sort of pockets of really, really valuable unstructured data that aren't being used. So, you know, we're doing a lot of stuff in the financial sector. Can't talk too much about that, some early pilots, but, but generally kind of core use cases around how do you bridge this sort of massive open information with more proprietary information inside the firewall? What are the tools that sort of bridge that semantic gap and how do you link together facts and relationships that may be relevant for a, you know, a number of different uh, For the ends. folks that don't understand digital reasoning's um, value proposition because big data is new even for advanced enterprises, what are you guys offering them in, in terms of the core value? Not so much the product, but like, why would someone be working with digital reasoning? Also, we know why the government would be surveillance, but in general, from a commercial standpoint, why would someone engage digital reasoning? What's the big data angle that you have there? Yeah, it's a great question. So you've got these you know, set of, of industries, and I think it does cut across a number of different industries that are really, that are data intensive, that are trying to make data-driven decisions, and they're increasingly aware that there's really large pockets of important information. Unstructured data could be in emails, it could be in reports, it could be out in blogs and open web that they're they're really not making enough use out of. And so, if I'm if I'm in a financial services company, that could mean uh, trying to understand at a deeper and broader level what's going on in a particular region of the world that might affect commodity prices. It may be something that's um, you know more particular to a company uh, that's about ready to be bought or sold, 
and then there are a number of other use cases that you can imagine as well. But it's, it's ultimately about, I think, very much in line with the, the, the theme of this conference, sort of putting data to work. And what we offer kind of in our product synthesis is the ability to take unstructured data from different domains and be able to put it into useful form very easily. And by that I mean taking, you know, in multiple languages uh, or information that uh, may be medical or information that may be, and one of the things we're featuring here, and I, I know Tim will talk about a little later on this afternoon with you guys, is what we're, what we're doing with patent data. There's a whole bunch of different types of data sources, and how do you use software to bring the information value out of that without turning that into a massive services exercise? So it's a lot That's of text-based really stuff, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, our, yeah, core, yeah, our core strength is on the unstructured side, although we do uh, you know, increasingly do sort of fusion of, of structured and unstructured. So how's it work with synthesis? You bring in all this largely text-based, but other, other mm -hmm. information as well, and then, then what happens? Mm -hmm. What happens once it gets in, into synthesis, and, and then what's the outcome? Yeah, no, it's a great question. So, a really sort of basic level we're taking, and we're doing kind of core processing of the of the text. So, we're we're doing things like you and I do when we read sentences. You know, what's the subject, and what's the predicate, and what's the object? How do you encode that using a computer, and then how do you store it? And then we're doing a set of analytics on top of that to figure out. Well, you know, I talked about you know Rob Metcalf. He's a person, and who's he? You know, similar to who's he connected to? Who did he speak with? Um, what types of things has he done in you know, particular locations or over particular periods of time? And then I'm enabling analysis to happen on top of that. So it's really about taking and doing a lot of things that we do when we read information, using that, using machine learning techniques to do that, and massively scale it out over uh, Hadoop and other NoSQL technologies. Are you guys targeting developers and commercial companies, or both? Yeah, both. I mean, we're you know, from a business perspective, obviously we're, we're, we're working mostly with um, uh, within customers, companies, um, but you know we're you know actively hiring smart folks who want to you know and, and data scientists that can help us out in this. But also you know I think there's particularly interesting use cases that someone might be able to leverage our own you know synthesis cloud for uh, and do you know a new type of analysis. So how different are you, and why is uh, why is what you do so different than you know, other yeah. techniques and approaches? Yeah, we're different because of the, the depth of the analysis that we're doing on unstructured data, the way we're doing it, that is it's really, it's, it's, it's uh, driven by machine learning techniques and it's highly statistical. What that means in pretty simple terms is that, in terms is that we can take um, a new domain and we can put um, a relatively, uh, you know, a person with basically, you know, good English skills and we can teach the computer to read that type of uh, text that can learn to identify certain types of entities, certain types of facts. Um, so the, the ability to, it's kind of, and really the ability to do that all at scale. So it's a, it's a combination of the scale of what we're doing, a lot of that is leveraging the you know, Hadoop and other tech, technologies, as well as the depth of the analysis and the way we're going about it and the ability to go through multiple domains and languages with relatively limited uh, services or customization. Okay, so you started in, in the, the government business and places that you can't talk about, <laughs> financial services, more stuff that you can't talk about. It makes marketing hard sometimes. Yeah. But now, now I'm basically going into the broader commercial applications. And, and what are you seeing in terms of, of, of adoption and how people are intending to use it or are actually using it? Yeah, well, I'd say we're relatively early in the process, to be honest. We have a number of folks that are using our Synthesis Cloud product and working through a number of pilots um, in, as I mentioned, in financial services and in some other areas, and we're going to keep working at that. I think it's, um, you know, we're seeing an incredible amount of demand. I think a lot of the stuff that this conference and others are, are emphasizing is that there's sort of worlds of data out there that are relatively unused, and there's really the, there's an incredible need, and you know, Mike talked about this this morning, for tools that sit on top of the infrastructure that ultimately help customers get to better answers. And that's really the, the name of the game for, you know, whichever domain we happen to be in. How does your how does your engagement typically work? I'm trying I'm trying to because people want to know how to engage with big data solutions. So when people come to you, what, what what are you seeing as the as the top driver around engaging with digital reasoning? Do they, and and it has, what does it look like? I mean, is it yeah. like you come in, you you sit with the company, do you do consulting, you do develop with them, you just give them the, the product? Walk us through that. Yeah, someone comes in and they say, I've got a, a, a need for a, a new type of analysis I want to do. I'm looking at you know, a, a new domain. I want you to look at you know, this type of news article, or I want you to look at a medical domain, or I want you to um, you know, analyze, you know, as I said, patents. So we'll take that, we'll talk to them, we'll understand what the need is, and we'll run it through our engine. And we'll say, here's what the, here's what the system shows. Here's a set of relationships and facts that you couldn't have you know, gotten otherwise. And we did it you know, in a very short period of time, and you can access it because it's all you know, hosted. 
So the classic uh, big data kind of conversation line is, you got to know what questions to ask, right? Yeah. So do you guys, are they, are the clients getting, your customers getting smarter now with that? Are there tools that they use or do you guys still have to hold their hand and, and kind of walk through a little bit slowly? How automated and how, e the simplicity side of it's a big focus, Mike was talking about that as well, I agree. What is, where are we at with that? Yeah, I think in certain domains it's really easy. They're trying to figure out and build a profile of a particular you know, company or in a particular um, person or organization and you know, the system takes in data and shows you a map of the things that are connected to it or gener generates a list of similar related entities. That's pretty straightforward and folks are pretty comfortable with that. It's pretty much out of the box. But I think what's happening in this space is the scale of the data expands and as the sort of the appetite for taking on more complicated things, we're also having conversations where someone says, well, actually what I'd really like to do is take your outputs, entities and relationships, and I want to do more advanced statistics on that. And you know, we would work with them and enable that, uh, that capability. And they may want to do it in a new domain or they may want to do it in a, in a new language and you know, we'd work with them on that as well. So it's a, it kind of spans from folks who sort of out of the box say, yeah, I want to do this type of thing to folks who are looking for a more complicated uh, extended solution and we're comfortable working with both of them. So what's the big picture aspiration um, in terms of how you guys want to change things? How are you going to change the world? Yeah, I mean, I think we're about making information uh, far more useful to many more folks. And I think the scale of the data, and we want to do that across verticals. We want to do that in you know, missions that matter for all of us every day, and we want to do that in domains that are you know, not government. And um, I think where we're really trying to make a, make a difference is um, we, we're, we're very, very confident that there's a large number of data sources that are untapped. People are making decisions that could be improved sometimes dramatically, and at far lower cost, and we want to provide a software solution that makes them more effective in doing that. And we want to do that across a number of verticals, and we want to do it with a great team of folks, and you know, we're, we're one of the, you know, the great things about being here is we're actively talking to a ton of folks, and you know, we're hiring, so find us if, uh, if we're not finding you. Who are you guys looking to hire? Give us your roadmap for this year. What's, your, what's on your plan for the company? Yeah, we've got pretty ambitious plans in terms of finding folks that have, you know, deep expertise in uh, machine learning, we need you know, Java guys, we need folks who are familiar with all of the uh, sort of um, big data technologies. We need folks who can um, connect with uh, specific customer needs, so subject matter experts in some of the, the fields that, I, that I've mentioned. Um, and then there's always need for folks that, uh, that can do business development itself. So we're looking at, you know, across, the, across the spectrum. People got to move to Tennessee, or is no? We got customers all over. Tennessee's a great place. Uh, we golf, love it. We, good you golf, got warm weather. Nice I love that. No uh, state income tax. Uh, close to Nashville, just far enough away. Just close enough, right? No As road rage. When we move, <laughs> Palo Alto. It's, it's just far enough away from San Francisco, but close <laughs> enough, right? Uh, <laughs> Well, thanks for coming on theCUBE. You guys are great. We want to personally thank you guys for the tremendous support. We really enjoy you guys on theCUBE at Hadoop World. Uh, we love your team. We love your approach. You bring in some reality and some smarts to the semantic web. Um, the machine learning is how we heard the, uh, the guy from O'Reilly saying that uh, the thing that he's really pumped about is the machine learning, applied machine learning. And so all those cool things that you guys are doing is really going to really do well. So congratulations and thanks for your support. We love you. Love you guys. So thanks for having me. Appreciate well. it.